Guys, hurry up, please. <laughs> 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 gene expression at RNA level, also used to study and identify proteins and genes. RNA is also known as RNA in RNA experience, gene sequencing, gene knockdown, and post transcriptional gene silencing. Now we're talking about central dogma. Central dogma is the transfer of genetic information from DNA to RNA to proteins. RNA occurs at the mRNA level so that, the, so that it does not translate into proteins. This is a timeline of RNAi. First, in 1990, post-transcriptional gene silencing was discovered in petunia plants. In 1998, RNAi was discovered in C. elegans by Andrew Fire. And in, from 1998 to 2001, RNAi was made to work in yeast, the software, plants, and trypanosomes. Uh, in 2001, successful RNA, siRNA experiments were done in mammalian cells. This is important because now we know that RNA can one day be used in humans and it will be used to repress genes in human cells. In 2002, Science Magazine named RNA Technology of the Year. And in 2006, which was last year, a Nobel Prize was awarded to Andrew Byer and Craig Mello for the discovery of the mechanism of RNA, which I'll be talking to you about later. Here are some background information of RNA. In 1990, Scientists from the U.S. and Netherlands wanted to produce petunia plants with enhanced colors by adding a gene that was responsible for the color, and they wanted a deep purple like this one. However, the results were partially or fully white instead of the deep purple. These scientists did not know the mechanism until 1998 when Andrew Fire and Craig Mello discovered the mechanism in C. elegans. What they did was they inserted double-stranded RNA into C. elegans and noticed an effective gene silencing. They received a Nobel Prize last year. Now I'll be talking to you about the mechanism that they discovered. First, they inserted double-stranded RNA in the cell, and which was cleaved by a dicer, which was cleaved by a dicer into small interfering RNA. Those RNA, small interfering RNA, formed into RNA-inducing silencing complex, which mediated the unwinding of the small interfering RNA and kept only the antisense mRNA. Those antisense RNA then binded to the binded to the targeted mRNA in a sequence specific manner and which was later destroyed by the cell. RNAi was made to work in these organisms right here, petunia plants, C. elegans, the software, zebrafish, mice, yeast, and arabidopsis. Delivery of RNAi in C. elegans is extremely easy because all you have to do is soak it into an RNAi solution. So what is the point of using RNAi? RNA is, like I said before, RNA is used to determine the function of gene that is being repressed. So in this experiment, this is a control pupa, and this is the one that was repressed with BRC. Because nothing was done to the control, it is normal. However, this pupa was repressed with BRC. And when we used RNAi, we found out that BRC functioned in metamorphosis. Now I'll be talking about the applications of RNA. RNA is highly specific and used, and is remarkably potent. It is used to investigate the function of genes and it reduces gene expression. Small interfering RNA also have the potential to be therapeutics for cancer, viral infection, parasitic infection, and more. This is about RNAi therapy approach. And like RNAi therapy approach, small Small molecules and antibodies are also used as therapeutics. And in RNAi, the target is mRNA. The challenge is delivering it into the patient, and the advantage is that it attacks disease-causing agents. Small molecules and antibodies are similar to 
RNAi, except they target the proteins instead of the mRNA. In small molecules, the challenge is specificity and the advantage is gold, is gold standard of treatments. So for an example, pills are an example of small molecules because they're not 100% specific. So when you, when you intake the, when you take the pill, they don't, you don't always get the stuff, you don't always get the right, um, you don't always get it in the right place because you have side effects. This is what causes side effects. And in antibodies, the target is proteins and the challenge is penetration and is marketable in biotechnology. Now I'll be talking to you about the practical use of RNAi. and such analysis of forward genetics and reverse genetics. So first what you do is you randomly mutate, you randomly mutate a gene using UV or chemicals and you observe the phenotype. And in our case, we'll say that it's forgetful. Then you take all the forgetful mice and you find out what gene is responsible and you sequence that gene that has been mutated. And when you find it, you get to name it anything you want. And in this case, we named it dummy. And then you take the sequence that you find in forward genetics and you can either knock out, knock in, or knock down using RNAi. So when you knock out, the expected phenotype is gonna be that it's gonna be forgetful. But when you knock in, knock into a knock in, you could have great memory, but if you knock into one that is um already has like that is already forgetful, you might have the potential to restore its memory. But when you knock down, it will be forgetful, but RNAi is actually temporary repression so that it might be able to be, it might be able to restore its memory. So the future of RNAi can be used for cancer which HIV related diseases. It can also lead to drug recovery and therapeutic. So RNAi is important because it helps and study and it leads to for disease and it also has biological functions such as antiviral and regulation of depression. Now I want to thank HHMI, Hunter College Biology Department, Ong, and all my classmates, and all of you guys for coming and supporting me. <laughs> and I also did two other projects. One is for proteins it's called ubiquitin, and the other one was zebrafish, which is a model organism. You could check out your flyers that was given to you, and you could see my website too. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce.